you have any idea who Alex Jones was at that time? No, sir. Was what you saw in that school fake? No, no. No, sir. Was it synthetic? No, sir. No, sir. See any actors that day, Bill? No. Those children real? It's awful. It's awful. Welcome back to Court TV Live. So happy to have you with us this afternoon. I'm Ashley Wilcott. We are now switching gears to Waterbury, Connecticut, where conspiracy theorist Alex Jones faces his second defamation trial. Six jurors will decide how much money Jones will have to pay for calling the Sandy Hook school shooting a hoax. Jones will not be appearing in court unless he chooses to take the stand. However, InfoWars representative Brittany Paz took the stand today for the third time this week. She was questioned on the various falsehoods that Jones told his audience on his website, InfoWars.com. Some even from this week. Here's some of Paz's testimony from earlier today. He's been talking about this trial this week because he thinks that's going to make him money, correct? I don't think that that's the reason, but... You've been watching the show this week? Have I been watching the show? Yeah. No, I don't generally watch the show. Okay, so generally, though, what Mr. Jones does is he's trying to attract audience so that he can send them to the store, right? That's the business model we've been talking about. Yes. And the way he's been attracting audience this week, while we all have been here, is by talking about this trial, correct? Objection. Facts not in evidence. She doesn't know. Sustained. Okay. Well, let me show counsel exhibit 479. May I approach her? You may. See that? I do. Do you see Mr. Jones' logo for band.video in the corner? I do. Do you see Bill Aldenberg depicted in that picture? I do. Do you see lettering placed in the lower left-hand corner of the screen that says Alex Jones Kangaroo Court Watch Day One? I see that, yes. Okay. Inch copy. Sorry, Lauren. I'd offer it. It's not self-authenticating. Objection. Ms. Paz, you recognize this to, in fact, be a screen grab of footage that Mr. Jones played earlier this week, correct? She said she hadn't seen it, Judge. I hadn't. I've, I've never seen this, and I haven't seen the show. And I haven't reviewed it, so I can't say what this is. Okay. Mr. Jones and Free Speech Systems, as far as you know, is the only company that controls the band.video platform, correct? As far as I'm aware. And you see that logo right on there? In the upper right-hand corner? Yes, ma'am. I see it. Okay. I'd offer it, Your Honor. Objection not self-authenticated. Sustained. Move to strike the representations made about what's in it. As Alex Jones, objection. I didn't make the representations. I'm willing to move to strike them. Uh, Overruled. Has Alex Cook Jones been calling this trial a kangaroo report this week? Objection. She just said she hadn't been watching Foundation. Well, she's speaking for free speech systems, and she can have that information without having watched it. I don't know who she's spoken with or what she's done by way of her investigation. I haven't spoken to anybody this week, hey, uh, so I don't know. Has InfoWars um, been calling this trial a kangaroo report? I don't know. Um, let me um, let me show you four seventy seven. Still with us, litigation trial attorney Rich Schoenstein and FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon. Rich, I must start with you because one of the things that is always my pet peeve when I was on the bench is when attorneys would talk over either other attorneys or me as the judge because A, you have a court reporter and B, it's rude. Does it happen sometimes in the heat of the moment? Yes. Did you at all know the plaintiff's attorney continued to speak over whenever there was an objection and I just wanted to say stop talking? Stop talking one at a time, or did you notice that at all? 
I did see it happen a few times, and I saw the judge yank them up to a sidebar at least once to admonish them to stop doing it. You're absolutely right. It's rude, and it hurts the process because you have to have this court reporter take down every word so you have a record. Yeah, I do agree with that. All right, Bobby, let's, I, I know this is a defamation trial, civil case, and I know that's about damages, but do you have any insight you might offer based on what we've seen, what we've been watching about Alex Jones and his behaviors and what's been going on in this? Well, let's take the example we just saw. I mean, not only is he a sociopath, but he's a coward. I mean, he could have come in and testified to what this woman, now a representative of InfoWars, is up there testifying to, but he didn't want to put himself there, right? Because he doesn't want to answer the tough questions from 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 the from the attorneys. So, um, you know, that's the that's the the takeaway I get from this is he's a, he's a complete coward. He's fine when he's behind his own cameras and spouting off his ridiculous theories. Um, but when he has to come in front of somebody who can challenge him in open court and he's not allowed to kind of run off on a narrative, he's got to answer questions that are directed to him, he doesn't show up. So, so he's a coward. And he, you're right, he doesn't show up. But I have to turn our attention to that crazy video we're talking about that the jury actually saw today, evidence of the Sandy Hook's uh, vampires exposed. Let's watch from his show. <laughs> Here's my message, you know, I'm going to get a bit more from Megyn Kelly, Chelsea Clinton, and all these other sea hags of the New World Order. I'm not trying to get out of this alive, dumbasses. I'm not trying to get out of this a winner in your system. I'm here to bring you down. I'm here to make you pay for the wars and the lies and the corruption and the Clinton Foundation and all of it. That's why you keep missing the main calculation. I am a precision guided heavy munition coming in on top of you. I'm here to stand up for the innocents. I don't like you. I don't like you getting away with what you do. You make me sick. So I get the marbleware and everybody else comes in over me. Have you seen what we've done on talk radio now? Sounds just like me. All right, gentlemen, evidence. That's evidence before this jury determining uh, damages. And Bobby, I'm going to start with you because I can see you even out of the corner of my eye. I can see you shaking your head like this because do you think <laughs> this is good evidence to convince a jury to award, quite frankly, an astronomical amount of damages potentially? Well, it certainly has that potential, it has that effect on me. I hope it has an effect on them. It's outrageous. I just want to reach through the screen and, and, and hit this guy. I mean, he's he's outrageous he, in, in his cowardice, in his delusions. I mean, it's just, it just really gets to me But that, that this guy is a platform and that people believe it, but he's unwilling to put himself in a position where he has to answer directed questions without being able to spout off his narrative unchallenged. In fact, the way that we got here is he didn't respond to the lawsuit. He didn't file what he was required to file, and the judge eventually got to a place of, okay, there's defamation. Now, jury, you get to decide damages. Rich, talk to us about damages, because I know the potential damages in this case, and we know this as lawyers, are the monetary damages, the punitive damages, the attorney's fees, the cost, the declarative relief. All of these are possibilities. What, what might you think a jury in this scenario will do, will award? Well, I think, the, I think the plaintiff here, the plaintiffs, have to push this jury to award a heavy compensatory damage award because there may be some limits in Connecticut yet again to the size of the punitive damage award. And too often in these cases, it just happened in Texas, the juries are misled to thinking they can hammer him with a giant punitive damage award, and that's only going to get reduced because of statutory caps. So the plaintiffs here want to push and push and push. And the way the way they're doing it in this case is they're showing that he is profiting off of this stuff. He is not a patriot. He is a profiteer. He does this for likes, for hits, for money, for income, and the plaintiffs are coming after it all. And they're going to argue that he's continuing to capitalize on this, which I think, Bobby, is the reason you made your comments as you're shaking your head watching and saying, man, it just makes me so mad. 